Hey everybody, it's Jim, and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. Two lessons ago, we went over a while loop, and what that was, it said, while a test is true, do a bunch of, of commands. Then we went over the until loop. The until loop said, until a test is true, do a bunch of commands. And now what we have is a for loop. A for loop says, take a list of variables, and for each entry in that list, do a bunch of commands. The format looks something like this. What you do is you have a list that's separated by white space, and white space could be spaces, tabs, carriage returns, marginally carriage returns, I'll explain that later. And we assign the first entry in the list to the variable var, and then we run a bunch of commands. And then we assign the second entry to the variable var, and we run a bunch of the same bunch of commands, and so forth and so on for each entry in the list. Now the thing you got to watch out for in Corn Shell is that when you have a list, any white space is considered the end of an entry. So this list right here has four entries. We would really want it to be rose as one entry. Water lily is another, and sunflower is the last. And in order to accomplish that, you put the word water lily in quotation marks. So if this was a complete syntax here, with a do and commands and done, what would happen is rose would get assigned to flower, we'd run a bunch of commands, we'd come back up, we'd assign water lily to flower, run a bunch of commands, come back up, We'd run sunflower, excuse me, we'd assign sunflower to flower, run the same bunch of commands, and then since there's no more entries, we'd just exit out. Now, a few lessons ago, we went over the while loop, and this was the basic format of it, where we said n is 0 for the initial value, and as long as n is less than 6, do these commands. Command you do are you cube n, you print what it is cubed, you increment n by 1, and then you go back up and run the same test. As long as n is less than 6, you do these commands. When n is no longer less than 6, you go down to the done and you go and start processing afterward. I'm going to show you the same format, but used in a for syntax. So, for n in, and here's our list. Up here we assigned n to be 0. We do that same way by having the first entry to be 0. And here we tested to make sure n was less than 6. We do that by having our last entry be 5. In here we incremented n by 1 within the do to done portion. In our list we increment it by simply incrementing it by 1, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This will run. When it does run, first time we'll assign 0 to n, it will cube it, and then it will print the value cubed, and then it will go and assign 1 to n, and do the same commands all the way through to 5, do the same commands for 5, and then, once it has no more entries, it will go down below the done and start execution of the program from there. So, looking at the output of the script, as you can see, does what it's supposed to do. It went through each entry, and it cubed it. And this is the exact same thing that we had for the while loop. So sometimes, the for loop works out well for logic purposes. Sometimes a while loop does, and sometimes an until loop does. And notice here I use that classic technique where I just said waiting, and I have a read statement that's going to read a variable in, and it's just waiting for me to hit a carriage return before it continues on processing our script. What I wanted to show you next was that you don't need a predefined list of numbers or words. 
you can actually run commands that would normally be Unix commands and use the output from those commands as your list. And that's what we do right here. Okay. What this does, let's take a look at, actually, let's take a look at this. What the dollar sign parenthesis parenthesis says is whatever is inside of those parentheses is a Unix command. And normally, a Unix command would output all of its output to the screen. And we're saying instead of doing that, we want all of the output to go right here and plop it right down into our code. So this is real-time list generation. And what do we get? We get whatever is the result of this command. This command is a Unix command called grep. Grep just says, take a look at this file, and any line that has this pattern in it, we want. And normally, that will get printed to the screen. Looking at the actual file, which is in the directory etc, and named shells, this is the contents of it right here. So what we say when we want to grep for a forward slash, we're just saying give us any line that has a forward slash in it. And as you can see, it does get printed out to the terminal screen. Each one of these lines is terminated with a carriage return. So that's how in our list, in the cor corn shell script, it will know the end of one entry and the beginning of the next. Looking at the code, we see that we're going to find all of the lines in Etsy shell that have a forward slash in it, and we're going to plop them down right here, and then one at a time we're going to assign them to the variable shell, and then the only thing we're going to do is we're going to print the variable shell preceded by a slash t, a backslash t. Normally when you see the letter t it just means print a letter t, but if you remember the backslash means add to or remove from the meaning of the next character. In this case we're going to add to the meaning of the next character, so we are going to turn the letter t into a tab. So each entry in this file that starts that has a slash in it, and it's going to print it indented with a tab. So let's take a look at it. See, the program is still waiting for us to hit carriage return because of that read statement I had in there. And as you can see, I just had a statement beforehand that said the shells you can use are, and then it printed out each and every single one of those entries indented. And just to look back once again, you can see we had bash, seashell, corn shell, born shell, tc shell, and z shell. And we have the same exact entries here. However, they are indented. Loops become very useful tools for going through files, grabbing data out of those files, and performing a set of commands on each one of those entries in the file. Once again, the syntax for the for loop is for variable in your list, and in this case, it's captured the output from a Unix command. Do a bunch of commands, in this case it's just one, and then done.